why didn't she go there and just make regular cheese instead of make the cheese you loved? Yeah, creating this amazing line of foods that has now really changed the vegan world. Well, I don't know. How could I? I was vegan. So if I'm vegan, I can't make dairy cheese. Um, it was definitely something that was hard for me to give up when I transitioned to veganism about 35 years ago. Uh, it was the hardest thing for me to give up. You know, everything else was kind of easy, but giving up cheese, oh my gosh, you know, going to a party and having to ignore the the beautiful European style cheeses or or a pizza parlor and not being able to eat pizza was really, really hard. Um, so that is why I started the cheese company. I felt like we need to tackle, there's a serious cheese crisis in this country. If you think about it, the average American eats over 40 pounds of cheese a year. Compare that to the turn of the 20th century when the average American ate about four pounds of cheese a year. You know, so, I mean, it, it's really, really frightening the amount of cheese we're eating uh, today versus, you know, over a hundred years ago. And what that's happening, you know, how that's impacting our our bodies and our planet. So you so you decided to go into the uh, vegan cheese business because of the health of Americans, because you saw a uh, a need of people who didn't want to eat cruelty but couldn't find and were addicted to their to their dairy cheese. What what was the motivation? Yeah, I think you know, for me, my my life has been always around producing beautiful. Uh, food that's vegan to help convert people from uh, a, a conventional diet to a more sustainable, compassionate lifestyle. And I've done that th uh, for the last 35 years. Uh, cheese is, I think, the whole is the holy grail. It's the last hurdle. It's the thing that everyone says, I would go vegan, but for the cheese. I just can't give up cheese. And the other thing that's really frightening about cheese is that most people think it's rather benign. Um, I was sitting in on a, a focus group one time and people were talking about how guilty they felt when they ate meat uh, because, you know, you're actually killing the animal. But cheese is better because they come from happy cows um, and, and, you know, no ch cows are harmed in the process of making cheese. Um, and I think what the majority of people don't realize is that the cheese industry is exactly the same as the meat industry. If you think about it uh, from the very, very beginning, what happens to all the male calves? Male calves don't will never produce milk, and so they're slaughtered either at birth or they're raised into the veal industry. The veal industry exists because uh, they were sort of like the extras, the unwanted extras of the byproduct of the, the dairy industry. And then what happens to the female cows after they've given milk for four to six years and their milk production declines is that they also... Uh, get turned into hamburger. So basically, milk is uh, basically a gateway into the meat industry. It's the same thing. Milk, all dairy cows end up as meat cows in the end. So it, it's a complete myth that that American that, that we all believe. You know, we there's a lot of myths about milk that we believe. We think that cows are these magical creatures that just give milk year round without having to ever be impregnated. Um, there's so much that we take for, that we assume about milk that's simply wrong. And when you really do a deep dive into it and realize the detrimental effects of, of the entire uh, animal uh, dairy uh, processing on not only our bodies, but the environment um, and everything else, you know, down to the school lunch program, it's really, really shocking. It's probably the worst industry that exists. Yeah, we had Howard, on that one. Yeah, we had Howard Lyman on the cattle rancher, and yes. he he said he felt dairy was far more cruel than the cattle ranching because, as you said, they get killed at the end like the uh, beef cattle, but they also endure five years of hell. Um, That's and then, right. of course, right. and beef so cattle are of, dead at nine months. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And right. Uh, so many of the doctors have also said, yeah. if you're going to give up something, uh, first give up the dairy. Right. Mm -hmm. From a health perspective, from a breathing perspective, from a bone perspective. I mean, we've had so many. From doctors. everything. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It, yeah. Do you remember? I mean, my own journey. Go ahead. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say my own journey uh, in transitioning to veganism was because I had all those health issues. Um, that was certainly one of them. So, so to talk to us about that. You first became vegetarian when you were about 12. What was the what was the uh, inspiration for that? Well, you know, I think in a young mind, at, at some point, there is an opportunity to make a connection between 
the pork chop and a pig. And lucky for me, I was able to make that connection because of some friends. So thank you so much for tuning in today. If we helped you in any way, then click the subscribe button and let's keep hanging out together. We have so much more to share with you. And if you need more information on actually making the switch for good, please visit us at switchforgood.org for loads of info. And you can subscribe to our mailing list where you will receive all sorts of super cool gifts, discount codes to our very fave dairy-free products, and a lifetime of powerful health tips. So join us on the journey to switch for good. This is the future.